Hello and welcome back to the bee vlog. Today I'm going to be doing some mite counts. This is not something that I normally do because as a treatment free beekeeper, if the hive has a high mite load, I'm not going to do anything about it anyway. So really what's the point in counting them? But this year I'm going to be participating in a local citizen science project where my bee club and some other bee clubs in the area are going to be counting up our mites some people may be doing treatments, others won't. We're going to have some control groups, uh, some treated groups, to see how treatment versus non-treatment works, various forms of treatment, various forms of not treatment, uh, meaning the different equipment that's being used in the hive, and really kind of nail down in this area what we can do to help the bees deal with the mites. Now, if you're not familiar with mites, what I'm talking about mainly as the Varroa mite, or in the scientific community known as Varroa destructor. Very appropriately named because these mites, they're found in every hive, but if they get out of control, they just destroy the hives. And it's a major problem for all beekeepers. So it's something that we really focus on a lot in our, in our beekeeping efforts, trying to deal with mites. Um, what I have here to use to count the mites is what's called a screen bottom board with an inspection tray or a mite counting tray or sometimes called a sticky board. And the way it works, I normally keep these bottom boards on my hives year round. Um, it's a screened board with a number eight mesh. That means that the opening is an eighth inch or there are eight wires per inch. Um, and this board just stays on the hive year round, but it has a... Okay, the neighbor is digging trench for sprinklers and it doesn't sound like he's going to let up anytime soon. So I'm going to turn the camera around so the mic is facing away from the noise, hoping we don't pick up much of it. And I'm just going to keep going. So this bottom board is something I keep on year round. It has that wire mesh so the bees can't go through and it protects them from other pests and predators. But it allows better airflow as well as putting in an inspection board or a sticky tray. The way this works is just slides in under the mesh in a little groove and it goes like that. You can see it. This board is just corrugated plastic really lightweight, cheap stuff. And I put a grid on it, one inch uh, grid, for counting mites. It doesn't have to be exactly one inch. The grid is really there just to make it easy to count. So as you go along, you don't accidentally double count mites or skip some. You can mark it down on a grid paper and, and so on. Then, after putting the grid on, before putting it in the hive, I just smeared it with some petroleum jelly and then slid it into place. Now you can leave this in for 24 hours or 72 hours to get a mite count. I'm doing it this time with a 24 hour time period. I'll take all the boards out, take them home, take a magnifying glass and count mites. labeling each tray with the name of the hive so I know which one it came from. This one came from Louise. And here we are all set up to do some counting. I was very careful in bringing the boards in not to rub them against each other as to not wipe off any of the debris and mites and other things that are on the board. The tools you need for this are pretty basic, just a magnifier, a pencil, and some light. I've got a few extra tools that I'll be using. I've got a digital microscope that I can use to capture video and photos. I'll actually be using my smartphone as a magnifier. There's an app on here that I can use that is a very handy little magnifier that can also snap photos. I've got my paper grid that matches the grid on the sticky boards. So as I count, I can write down the numbers in the appropriate grid space. I'm going to be starting with Queen Helen's sticky board. 
This was a hive that a couple of months ago was suffering from chronic bee paralysis, which is a virus that is spread by Varroa mites. Now here's a really good image of a Varroa mite. They are a small oval shaped insect. Let's see if I can get a better focus here. This one is on its back, stuck in the petroleum jelly, and is wiggling his little legs. They're approximately one and a half millimeters across. I'm going to zoom in here even further for a better magnification. What these mites do is they feed off the hemolymph or the blood on the, of the bee. They like to breed inside the capped cells of the brood and feed off of the larva where they mate and the females lay eggs, the eggs hatch and then the young can feed off of the larva. The adults will also continue to feed off of the adult bees they damage the exoskeleton and can cause injury to the bees. They also cause injury and development problems to the larva. And in addition to spreading viruses that cause problems with the hive and can, you know, in, in significant quantities can kill a hive. Here's another mite that is able to walk around a little bit, stuck in the petroleum jelly but has some minor mobility because at least it's on its legs. This is how they would typically look. You see their legs kind of poking out in the front. They look like a little crab but the legs don't go to the sides, they go out the front. There are many things that can be learned from doing a sticky board inspection besides just doing a mite count. Uh, you can look at the other debris that's on the board and get an idea of what's happening in the hive. For example, I see bits of yellow flakes here. That's from the pollen. So it looks like they're bringing in some pollen, some source of pollen that's yellow. It's hard to see on that other board, but on this one, you can see most of the debris is over here on this side, indicating that that's where the most of the hive activity is. That's where the cluster is located and their hatching brood. There's little bits of debris of the wax from the cappings of the brood emerging. This is a helpful diagnostic in the winter time when you don't want to open the hive, but you want to see where the cluster is, about how big they are, are they eating through their, their winter stores. And as long as you're finding debris, uh, usually wax cappings, you know that they're um, eating through their stores. Also in the spring, you can use these boards to see if there's a nectar flow on. You'll see little white clearish flakes from the um, fresh wax that they're drawing out. I don't have much of that right now because there's no nectar flow where they're drawing. It's not enough nectar flow for them to want to draw out new wax. As I do the count, I'm going to go square by square looking for those mites. And if I see any mites within the square, I count it. Any mites that are on the lines, what I'm going to do, since I'm working from the top left corner, working to the right, row by row, I'm only going to count any mites that are on the line if it's in the top or the left line. That way I don't accidentally double count as I go along. So this first square I see well there's one mite that keeps walking in and out of the square so I'm just going to count her plus there's one that's just outside of the square on the left side so I'll count those two in that one square and mark it down in position A1 and so on moving across the board to B1 
see any C1 has one and just continue on finished counting all six boards and that took a couple hours. Didn't look too bad. Uh, the three hives that overwintered last year, Elizabeth, Helen, and Jezebel, of those three, Elizabeth had the least count of only 14, Helen had the most of 69, and I kind of expected that hive to have the worst count because that was the one that had the chronic paralysis virus and Jezebel had 21. Of the other three hives, they were all swarms that I caught this year. Karma had seven, Louise had three, and Natalia had zero. Um, which doesn't surprise me too much. Natalia has the smallest population of bees as well, so I figured they're going to have the smallest population of mites as well. I also had a lot of fun playing with the digital microscope. I found a bee head on one of the boards and I've been playing with that and getting pictures of the eyes and pretty cool stuff. <laughs>